NXT time, folks. NXT time. The Fallout show from NXT TakeOver in your house 2 from last Sunday. Which, before we begin this review, go check out my NXT TakeOver in your house review 2 online right now. With me and my co-host Kyle Coleman. We went about almost an hour talking about that show. Maybe 40, 50 minutes in total, but there were times where we just kind of sat, just talked about anything and whatever, you know, just, you know, just shooting it and whatnot. But overall, a one hour review of NXT TakeOver in your house to review is uploaded online right now. So go check that out if you haven't seen that yet. But NXT tonight, what is the fallout from TakeOver? Uh, which, by the way, I guess they're not doing any more uh, video fans, you know, kind of like the Thunderdome or Mini Thunderdome. And they have actual people in here now since they did it, you know, back at TakeOver with all masks. Hopefully this crowd is actually more live than last Sunday because, by God, that crowd was really dead last Sunday. Very dead. But we, William Regal came out to no music. Um, Regal came out. He talked about what was going on. You know, he's been here from NXT since day one. Uh, him and uh, Triple H have been talking about this since over 10 years ago. And basically, he got to be on that announced desk to call over to call to ever first over TakeOver. And he talked about how TakeOver has expanded to many cities and countries, even being in the Blackpool, the UK, uh, you know, Blackpool, UK and whatnot. And he even talked about, um, you know, just where NXT is gone. And we see Regal crying. And he talked about all the takeovers from San Jose to Brooklyn to Portland to all these big cities they've been to. And that Florida has been their home. And basically, Regal, you know, um, I've given you everything I could, but I'm not capable right now for what you guys deserve. So before he could even make this big news, uh, next thing you know, Cross and Scarlet come out then. Which, you know, I still think it's crazy with Regal that, all right, man, it was the most stressful seven days, as he said. After all this time, all this time you've been the general manager of NXT, only seven days, seven stressful days have made Regal now question himself and whatnot if he can, if he can even still do this job on NXT, just NXT in general being the GM. But as Cross came out, you know, we all knew this day would come, but not right now. And I want to see this. At least I get to see it for myself now. And he says, are you out here crying? You're, you're pathetic and whatnot. And listen, you knew you was going to lose control. And I, you know, punched a hole through the Mount Rushmore of NXT, beating four other guys. And basically said, you need to, um, I guess you're done and leaving NXT. But I demand you come out here and say, cross conquers all. Next thing you know, Samoa Joe's music hit. Samoa Joe making his uh, WWE return after being gone for about a month or two since he was fired from this company, uh, being released, and now he's back. Listen, there was already rumors for the past few days now that Samoa Joe was going to be coming back to NXT, so it's not much of a surprise. Apparently, I guess Triple H was that mad that they released Samoa Joe since he was on commentary on Raw. So I guess kind of like with Ronaldo, someone say he took pity on him and got him a job at NXT, so I'm not surprised Joe was back here, since there's been rumors for days now he was going back to NXT, but as Samoa Joe walked out there, Joe basically, um, you know, wanted to talk to Regal, and they wanted to talk about this later, and not right now, but, you know, Regal said, you know, for the love of NXT, he says that the fans deserve a general manager that can live up to those expectations, and he offered Joe the position, but Joe said, I'm not doing it, all right, and this for seven years, Regal's brought you the best talent in the world, including myself. And that uh, Regal also made NXT a global phenomenon for the past seven years. And Joe said, I have to decline because I'll offer my services to NXT to make sure Regal gets the respect from everybody around here. And Regal basically says, all right, there are going to be some conditions then. You're not a competitor. You can't touch anybody unless you are provoked. Joe accepted it. And he looked across face, said like, what are you still doing in this ring? Tick-tock, young champion. I don't know how old Cross is. I don't think he's that young. But um, basically said, tick-tock, young champion. Next thing you know, uh, Cross backed off. as Joe, The fans chanted, Joe is going to kill you. And na-na-na-na, hey, 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 goodbye. So Regal and uh, Joe shook hands then after that. So Samoa Joe, like I said, it's not a big surprise. He's back in NXT. Like I said, we already knew about that for a few days now. But uh, this was a very interesting segment. Joe's not the general manager, but basically throughout tonight, he's basically an enforcer for Regal. He's Regal's muscle, all right? 
He can't. He's not a wrestler on the show. I don't even know if Samoa Joe's even medically, you know, cleared to compete back again just in wrestling in general. But he is going to be doing something, and he can't really fight anybody unless someone provokes him on here. So he's basically Regal's enforcer. Regal's still going to be the GM. Obviously, we know that by tonight, but it's not like Joe's taking over anything. It's just they're working together. Regal still does GM stuff. Joe's the enforcer. Tag team match. Imperium versus Brazongo. I missed half of this match. I know Breeze got the roll-up win from the hot tag. And then uh, got the win. Then Imperium attacked. And, you know, threw the Imperium flag over Tyler Breeze then. So, two tag teams that aren't really doing anything right now, if you ask me. Imperium, I still think it was odd with the whole Alexander Wolf name. But he ended up getting released. Brazongo just kind of pop in, pop out, if you ask me. They're here, they're there, they're... They're back sometimes. They're not back sometimes. They just kind of, they're here and there. So it's two teams I can't say I really care about that much. Uh, but next, they had um, O'Reilly and Adam Cole brawl in the back. As Regal said, that both of you guys are going to, you know, wrestle at the Great American Bash. Why are we seeing these two wrestle again? And then next thing you know, as they're still brawling with each other, um, I guess Adam Cole ended up pushing um, Samoa Joe. Joe was provoked, so Joe basically choked out Cole then. So, basically, it looks like if anybody tries to touch Joe or try to argue with Joe or fight Joe, Joe just going to be putting folks to sleep almost every week. That's what it looks like what's going to happen. You provoke Joe, he going to put you to sleep. And that's basically what he did with Adam Cole right in here and put him to sleep, choking him out. Um, next, Santos Escobar was cutting a promo, talking about the whole North American title, talking about being embarrassed, and he said he still wants a one-on-one -on -one match for that North American title. I don't know why they just didn't do that to begin with in that whole winner-take-all thing and take over. Uh, Kushida came out for his open challenge against Trey Baxter, formerly known as Blake Christian. I've seen the guy on Impact. Mostly he was in a lot of X Division 5-way matches. Honestly, I don't know where they're getting these names for these guys. Blake Christian, Trey Baxter. They're both not really good names, but I, it's, uh, I, so I knew I'd seen this guy before. Like, oh yeah, I didn't remember this guy was on Impact. And... Wasn't a bad match. Kyle O'Reilly came out and watched in, which was kind of odd with O'Reilly, too, because wasn't this guy just fighting for the NXT title a few days ago, and now he wants the Cruiserweight belt, and he's supposed to be fighting Cole again? And, you know, he never said he wanted the Cruiserweight belt, but it's like, why is he looking at the Cruiserweight division for? Like, dude, aren't you definitely in the whole heavyweight title division right now, or was in it? And, like, this guy even 205 pounds or over 205? I don't know. Basically, Kushida got the win. Not a bad match. Um, O'Reilly said, so I'm not here for open challenges, but I want to challenge you to a match next week. So, Ring of Honor, folks. Ring of Honor. Or New Japan. But still, why is O'Reilly going for the Cruiserweight title? It looks like, dude, you were just in the title hunt for the NXT title. So, well, it's kind of odd that he just switched around that. Uh, Taya, who was back with her dog. I haven't seen her in a few weeks. Went to talk to... Um, Aliyah and Jesse Kamea, basically, I saw your match at TakeOver. What match did they have at TakeOver? I must have missed the pre-show or something, because I, I don't know. I really must have missed it. Um, wh what else? Mercedes Martinez, basically talking about the whole stuff with Zia Lee, saying, you know, she's going to get payback. Ted DiBiase came out with the million-dollar title already in the ring with his security force out there watching it. Eli Drake uh, came out, well, he came with a car uh, arriving at the Performance Center or, and basically came out saying, let me talk to you. And, you know, it's rare in this business that, you know, you can, when you meet your heroes, and this was very special to him right now because he said that Ted was always a hero of his and uh, he took this ladder match seriously and basically talked about he used to be glued to the TV screen when he was little. Basically, he watched wrestling um, with his dad and that he was a big fan of Ted DiBiase. Always had the action figure. Always wanted to be him and whatnot. And basically, it's one of the greatest moments in his wrestling career. It's an honor that he's being crowned a million-dollar champion. I hope it's better than Ted DiBiase Jr. Um, Ted basically, um, you know, he had the title in, and now he has everything. All right? He has everything now. And as fans chanted, you know, L.A. Knight and uh, We Want Cameron, Eli Drake went on to talk about how, you know, this moment means a lot to him. And now that he has everything he wants, now he can drop something he doesn't need. He punched Ted DiBiase, which I'm surprised he took a bump. And then he beat up his security force. Eli Drake started beating up Ted then. 
Um, Cameron Grimes came out and basically uh, made the save, knocking Eli Drake out of the ring, throwing a jacket out there. So, uh, surprisingly, Ted DiBiase took him up here, folks. Which, for a minute, I'd say, what is this feud even still about at this point? Because um, I thought any of these guys were going to be fighting for Ted to be a manager, but I guess we're still doing this million-dollar title battle right now. So, who will be st I guess it's going to be another one-on-one -on -one match for that million-dollar championship, but will Ted DiBiase uh, manage Cameron Grimes? We'll see from there. We'll see. Um... Next, uh, Samoa Joe and Rigo still trying to, I guess, keep the peace around here with Dakota Kyra Kel Gonzalez coming out as Ember Moon shot through Black Eye tried to, you know, want to fight them. I almost thought one of them were going to touch Joe and Joe had to choke one of the women out. Almost thought it was going to happen. Dakota Kyra Kel Gonzalez went against Casey Kenzaro and Kaden Carter. Where have we seen these two? Where have they been? Where have they been? I want to know where 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 have they been? I swear the last time they were on TV, they had Kaden Carter with the whole death grip from the, the Zia Lee and the Orochimaru character. Just... You, you know, the whole mist. And I, I still think that looks silly, though. The, 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 the tongue and death grip. Tongue and death grip. <laughs> that, that's, that still looks funny because they overreacted it so much. The, 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 the death grip. The death grip. But, um... Yeah, this tag match was not bad, though. Good tag match. Thing is, you don't have a lot of tag teams. Why bring a team back we haven't seen in weeks just to lose? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't make sense. Bring a tag team back, you lose. What? But yeah, we all know why they had to get the win, I guess. Uh, they had this random cell phone charge graphic. We're at 27%. Guess we'll get more next week. Io Shirai came out saying she's back. She was about to say something until Candice LeRae came out saying, I'm glad you were gone. No one doesn't want you anymore. I'm the uncrowned champion. And next thing you know, um, you picked the wrong time to come back. And the Hartwell came in and attacked Io Shirai then. Basically, as they jumped them, um... So he start came out saying it's just Io Shirai's friend and whatnot. If you gotta remember, they had faced each other and they had them tag for a minute. So probably get a tag match with that next week. But uh, at least Io is back. The Diamond Mine debuts next week. We'll see what that is. Uh, I thought they were gonna do another Regal promo, but the camera cut them off then for some reason. Uh, even when they were in the office, Johnny Gargano, Austin Theory showed up as um, you know Gargano trying to butter up, but Joe said get out. Pete Dunn uh, came in and basically they had a stare down before leaving. Uh, Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa went against the Grizzly Young Veterans. Great main event to end off the show. This match could have been on takeover for all we knew. This was great. Real great. I enjoyed it. I liked the finish. I did like when the Grizzly Young Vets had put um, Ciampa through the, um, you know, the banner of the announce table. And then before they were about to like, put him through the announce table itself, um, Champa recovered, air raid crash on the table, which it did not break. I am the table, then and then and then. And basically, they got in the ring, took out James Drake, ankle, ankle lock, and uh, arm bar at the same time. So, uh, yeah, Toothless Timmy and Old Man Champa won. Obviously, they're going to be going into MSK pretty soon for those titles. Yeah, I like the Grizzly Young Vets, but they take a lot of L's on this show. Like, they really take a lot of L's. I wish they get more wins because, um, they take a lot of L's. And I, come on, you knew Champ and Thatcher are winning this match. And I'm sure they're going to be going into MSK soon. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat MSK for the tag team titles. I can see that happening. Uh, but before the show ended, Mackenzie Mitchell interviewed Regal and Joe. Basically talk about how it's, uh, you know, Joe's first night as, as enforcer. It's night one. Basically, I guess things, it was a good night in NXT. And Regal and Joe drove off in the car. So... We'll see what happens next week. But yeah, Samoa Joe back on TV. Uh, like I said, at least they found something for him to do. And hopefully he gets medically cleared soon. But, you know, I, I look at Samoa Joe. Be honest with yourself. Did anybody really see Samoa Joe going anywhere else? And I'm sure anybody will want Joe. I'm sure people would have expected him to show up in AEW. I'm sure people would have expected him to show up at Slammiversary on Impact. Some maybe could say Ring of Honor. Some could say New Japan. Joe could have ended up anywhere with all, you know... Any company when a lot of those releases happen, but he got a job back in WWE on NXT, so he gonna be all right. Now, does Alistair Black may show back up since that's being rumored? I don't know, but Samoa Joe is back. 
He's the enforcer for NXT right now for Regal. So we'll see what goes back on there. So expect to see Joe choking niggas out every week. Expect that to happen. But yeah, that's NXT night, folks. Great main event. I'm done with this review. Check out the TakeOver in your house 2 review online right now. Comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Hooded Night890. I'm out. See you guys later. Peace.